And tonight on The Daily Wrap, a busy weekend for Hillary Clinton, but can her campaign bounce back from that email scandal? Donald Trump takes a slight dip in the polls, but still leads the GOP pack. And an American airstrike kills 22 people at a hospital in Afghanistan, but is the media giving us the full story? This is The Daily Wrap, live from New York City. And welcome to the show, everybody. I'm Joe Concha, along with my co-host Rick Unger. Past your curfew, I am well, thank you. Nice but to did be you back. catch Hillary on Saturday Night Live? I did. I, you know, I, to be fair, I think they're all funny. I love when politicians go on Saturday Night Live, and I'm, I tend to be generous. I was even generous when Sarah Palin was on. So yeah, I loved her. I thought she was great. It's nice to have a band of writers behind you that's been doing it for 41 of course, years. Of course it does. I yeah. feel so old. That show's been on for 41. Well, I years. remember the first one, so that's that's how old. I feel. <laughs> well, I do. to the geriatrics right, he's a Forbes.com columnist and an Emmy winner. Bill, come on, please. He's quite young. Bill Tucker. And finally, <laughs> he's the assistant online editor for Commentary Magazine. Noah Rothman, all smiles, is back once again. All right, everybody, let's get right to the daily download. Hillary Clinton fighting hard to get her campaign back on track after her email scandals have derailed said campaign, according to the latest NBC Wall Street Journal Marist poll. Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders has a big nine-point lead in New Hampshire. In Iowa, Hillary still leads Sanders by 11, but is getting trounced in head-to-head matchups against three potential GOP nominees. Jeb Bush beats Secretary Clinton by 10 points. Donald Trump wins by seven, and Carly routes her by 14. Hillary's doing all she can to right the ship, but still faces tough questions especially about those emails. Here she is on the Today Show with Savannah Guthrie. On the one hand, you've said sorry and you've apologized <laughs> for the confusion that it created. Right, right. On the other hand, sometimes you say it's the work of your Republican rivals mm -hmm. going after you. Mm -hmm. It's the same old partisan attacks. And I right. guess my question to you is, which is it? Well, actually, it's both. I mean, I'm sorry uh, that I made a choice that has resulted in this kind of... Uh, um, situation. Yeah. And but it's also, as we now know, very clearly the way that the Republicans are trying to bring my, as they admit, poll, poll numbers down. And Do you get how bad it looks? And when Savannah didn't give up on the questioning, Hillary got mad and blamed Republicans for the email scandal. Look at the situation they chose to exploit to go after me for political reasons. The death of four Americans in Benghazi. I knew the ambassador. I identified him. I asked him to go there. I asked the president to nominate him. There have been seven investigations led mostly by Republicans in the Congress, and they were nonpartisan, and they reached conclusions that, first of all, I and nobody did anything wrong, but there were changes we could make. This committee was set up, as they have admitted, for the purpose of making a partisan political issue out of the deaths of four Americans. I would have never done that, and if I were president, and there were Republicans or Democrats who were thinking about that, I would have done everything to shut it down. You're now, I haven't seen that kind of passion since the what difference does it make moment. Let's take it out of the bubble for a second, all right? Because yeah. we follow this stuff every day. You're just the average American. You're taking care of your kids. You're working harder than you ever have before. Do you watch that and you say, you know what? Yeah, Republicans are going after Hillary Clinton. Does this tactic work here? Rick? Well, I mean, here's you remember last week I said that this was Hillary's birthday, Christmas, and New Year's present all rolled into one. Oh, uh, and it was with McCarthy. You mean? Yes, but. Look what Explain that led to. Explain the McCarthy to. comments again. Well, the McCarthy comments was that the Benghazi committee was all about going after Hillary, and that's what she's referring to here. The only problem is she had been asked a question about the emails, right. and rather than answer that question, she jumped immediately to what the Republicans were doing to her, and that was, you know, pretty entertaining. Now, obviously, if you're not a Hillary fan, you're going to go, "Hey, wait a minute! It's not what she asked you. She didn't ask you about that. She asked you about the emails. Answer that question now." Hillary has a great fallback. Anytime she gets asked a question she doesn't like, well, you see how the Republicans are stacking the deck against me. Mm -hmm. They admitted it. Great, great, great gift for Hillary Clinton. It's interesting because I, I wanted to hear Savannah ask her, are, is the FBI run by Republicans? <laughs> because that's who's doing the investigation. Why can't somebody just ask yeah, her that the question? The FBI I don't know they hasn't charged her. No, no, I know, but no, they, they are investigating. But they are investigating yes, her. they are. They're investigating. And, and her answer, right to Rick's point, was she did the classic distraction. 
She didn't answer the question. She went very passionately after something, and it works for her believers. It maybe works for those people who want to believe in her, but for her detractors, it's not going to make one bit of difference. No. I'm under the impression that most of the people who are going after Republicans for what McCarthy said haven't watched the interview where McCarthy said what he said. He didn't say, we're going after Hillary Clinton and watch her poll numbers fall. We, she, he said, we're taking action. We're investigating Benghazi as a result her poll numbers have fallen. Now, this is an artless comment. I've said as much. But it's not. It's a bit of a leap of logic to say Republicans are going after me exclusively to make my, my poll numbers fall. She's been saying as much since last year. She's always been saying that this is a Republican witch. Do you witch question night. for a second whether or not this seventh Benghazi committee was formed for the specific purpose of bringing down Hillary Clinton? Uh, Come on, I, be honest. Be bringing down Hillary Clinton? Yes. Well, I think that there's certainly partisan motivations here, but I also okay. think that if you're even remotely interested in good governance, you're thankful to the Benghazi committee for exposing the extent to which Hillary Clinton was was focused on her own sense of convenience in office and uh, and flouting White House guidelines and State Department guidelines. If you're interested at all in good governance, you're thankful to this Benghazi committee. So in other words, it was a partisan committee and they were successful. They found something that she did wrong. Yeah, yeah. I would imagine that okay. uh, a lot of people should be happy if, uh, about about that. I, I don't think that's the problem. I think the problem is, is, is that it's highlighting the fact that they formed a partisan committee under the auspices of looking into Benghazi when what they were really looking to do and you know you know I'm not the world's biggest Hillary Clinton fan but I don't like it any more than the next person when committees in Congress don't investigate what they're supposed to be we saw it last every week. congressional select committee is I a partisan agree. committee I based agree. on the majority I agree. that appoints it and Democrats do it too I won't deny that for one second but we don't like it. We didn't like Planned Parenthood last week, where they did everything but investigate the problem they were supposed to investigate. And Republicans were rather inept there, and they didn't yeah. get a lot of accolades yeah. for Bill, it. Bill, you're, you're a former CNNer, and next week on CNN will be the Democratic debate. Right. Finally, <laughs> we're having a debate amongst Democrats. How much do you think the moderators and or other candidates go after Hillary Clinton specifically on this issue, since it's clearly her biggest weakness? Well, I think they're going to have to, because they don't have the controversy. They don't have the entertainment of Donald Trump. They don't have the multitudes of the Republican Party there to drive the ratings. So they're going to have to go after her if they want people to stick around and watch this debate. Otherwise, it I, really could be a very boring affair. Do you think she has her answer down pat now at this well, point? Well, as best she can. I think Bill's right. They're going to have to because for all the reasons right. you just said. The problem with this debate we're about to see is it's going to end up being a debate between Hillary and my prediction is Jim Webb. Because... He's Bernie, still running? Uh, he's still there, yeah, <laughs> as is Lincoln Chafee. Bernie Sanders is not going to hit her on this stuff, I don't think. Mm -hmm. I think that's the deal. He never has to this point. They well, haven't so far. It will be interesting to see because Bernie has said he would not conduct a negative campaign right. and he won't go on the attack. But his numbers are rising. Hers are falling. But he's going to say, let's have talk to at some policy. Point, you think? No, he doesn't have to. His numbers are rising without well, having to do it. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be really interesting. But yeah, I think Bill's on it. CNN's going to have to go after it. Speaking Speaking of Mr. Sanders, he had an event this weekend in Boston and 20,000 people showed up with 8,000 people outside. Yeah. I mean, that is extraordinary. I know Boston's a big college town and that's who he's appealing to. I think the irony is that the 73-year-old and artful guy, the kind of grumpy grandfather, is the guy who's appealing most to young people, Noah. Right, yeah, a veteran uh, New Hampshire reporter, I think it was James Pendell, said that he was there and he said, you know, uh, there's such a parallel between the uh, Obama phenomenon in 2008, and the energy and the enthusiasm and the excitement on the ground, and what Bernie Sanders is generating. It's, you cannot not make that parallel. I think that's really Im important. Rick, it's is accelerating. The, is the, is the firewall point. still in place in South Carolina? In other words, is this all just fun when he wins Iowa and when he wins New Hampshire and he probably I will think vote? So. I actually, I do not think Bernie Sanders is going to win Iowa and you saw further proof of that in that poll. I think he very well may win New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. And yes, I think the firewall is very much still in place. Now, what can throw all of that off rails? Joe Biden. Joe Biden. Exactly. Who may be announcing as early as this week. <coughs> Maybe. A couple of reports CNN. around praying because they're keeping a spot reserved for him on the stage. Oh, that would probably double their, yeah. their audience, no question right. about it. All right, lightning round. Does Biden run, yes or no? I don't think so. Not at this stage. I'm with no. I don't think so either. I do think so. I do think so as well. We have a clean Maybe split. Tie. Okay, <laughs> so what do you think about Hillary Clinton's interview on the Today Show this morning? Didn't look like a lot of fun. Go to NewsmaxTV.com slash comments. Let your voice be heard. May read those comments later in the show. Coming up next, Donald Trump taking a little bit of a dive in the polls, but he's still on top. We'll have the latest poll numbers for you. They are fascinating. Stick around right after the break.
still those shrill voices in the national political arena trying to undo what has finally been done. But they're not going to succeed. Don't worry about it. The Amer no, no, really. The, I mean this sincerely. The American people have moved so far beyond them and their appeals to prejudice and fear and homophobia. The American people are already with you. Look at the numbers. There are, there's homophobes still left. Most of them are running for president, I think. That, of course, Vice President Joe Biden, not currently running for president, suggesting during a speech for the human rights campaign that the current crop of Republican candidates might be homophobes. Was he just being funny? You can make the call. Despite his not yet announcing that he's in the race for his party's nomination, Biden continues to grow in the polls. Now, I got to ask you, is this swipe uh, at the GOP kind of an indication that he's going to run, even though you think that he isn't? Uh, yeah, well, I, my, I think that he's probably not going to run because of a lot of technical reasons. I don't think he's going to want to spend a lot of time raising money, building the organization, etc. Uh, what that re comment reflects is that he's still very much a political animal. He does what he feels like would work in the moment. It's what happens to Donald Trump, which sort of doesn't really get him into trouble, but it gets Joe Biden into tons of trouble. Yeah. It's exactly why he got into so much problems. But is it, you just with said his, something really interesting, and, and you're right. When Donald Trump you know, hits that lowbrow, right. he doesn't get in trouble. In fact, he gets rewarded for it, but it right. is getting Joe Biden in trouble. Well, it doesn't get him in trouble with his base voters. His base voters ate that up. They also ate, when he was in the, in the room and said that Republicans want to put you all back in chains, the audience loved it. It right. killed. It didn't kill with the audience that it wasn't intended to be received. That's the problem, is that we, we live in a world where you can't micro-target anymore. You have to talk well, to an, a mass audience no matter what. So, Bill, do we, does the, I should say we, the media, the mainstream media, whatever you want to call it, do we overreact to what, uh, to me, appeared to be just somebody being funny, but then I'm supportive of, of Joe Biden, so maybe I'm cutting him a bigger break than somebody else might. But do we overreact to it? Yeah, I think we do. But, but again, he's a political animal. He's playing to an audience. And he got the reaction he wanted to because he couldn't help himself. He had to play to that audience. But as a Republican with many gay friends, it's a yeah. silly, stupid comment. Right. Well, I mean, so. we, we know better. We know even among the presidential candidates, uh, stories that we've heard that would suggest they certainly aren't all homophobic. Right. Homophobia is defined as what was the Democratic standard position 30 months ago. Opposition <laughs> to gay marriage. And on that note... That's pretty good. <laughs> Let's move on to the GOP race, where the latest Pew poll shows that Donald Trump still is leading the field with 25% of the GOP vote, while Dr. Ben Carson, who, by the way, will be on the Steve Malzberg show tomorrow at 7 p.m., uh, he comes in second now with 16% support. Meanwhile, Senator Marco Rubio and Carly Fiorina are presently tied for third with 8%, with Senator Ted Cruz following in fourth with 6%. Note that former Florida Governor Jeb Bush has now sunk to just 4% of the vote. The poll also highlights that the primary reason Trump continues to dominate it is his stance on immigration. Bill Tucker, you covered immigration for many years uh, with, with uh, what was that guy's name? Lou Dobbs, Lou Dobbs I believe, Salai, was yes. the person. Uh, is this issue going to carry Trump all the way to the nomination? Yeah, yeah, and let me set it in some context. The reason people are engaged and get passionate about immigration is because it's tied to employment. There are a lot of people out there who feel like, rightly or wrongly, that they are being displaced from their jobs, jobs that could be rightly theirs. They feel like their salaries are being depressed because of the flood of illegal immigration into the country. So that set in the context of employment, yes, that's gonna drive him and it will continue to be a big issue for him. Yeah, you could be right, Joe. I, I don't know about you, I really am surprised that Jeb Bush, I mean, you know that I was saying at the outset of all this that I thought Jeb Bush would be the ultimate nominee. Mm -hmm. And I still kind of wonder if he might, but I am shocked by the 4%. Can he do anything to turn this around? No, he can't, you unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, look, look at what happened after the Oregon shooting. And, and again, this was journalistic malfeasance, what they did with his comment right. about stuff happens. As if the context was, Stuff happens. What are you going to do? Some Which kids isn't got really shot. The way he said it. Of no, course it not. He meant tragedies happen, but he's so inartful 
right? And here's the thing. George W. Bush, 43, was an artful also. So was 41, but they were likable. Right. There's something about Jeb that looks like he's kicking and screaming just to be put out in public. He's not joyful. There's nothing likable about him. Which he's is, got the Bush brand name to go over college. Which is kind of interesting because it was Jeb Bush who said at the very beginning he only wanted to run if it could be a joyful campaign. Those were his words. Anything but, and as I said, you know, it, Bush, Bush, Bush. People hear it, they don't want a third it's Bush. Amazing. Right? It's bottom line. That's what we're saying. Well, you, you could be right. I honestly am surprised. I didn't think it would go this slow. Now, as we mentioned, tomorrow night, beginning at 7 p.m. Eastern, Dr. Ben Carson sits down with Steve Malzberg one-to-one -to, -one to discuss his latest surge in the polls. The question is, can he surpass current poll leader Donald Trump? You can find out in, your, in his own words tomorrow night at 7 p.m., but only here on Newsmax TV. And we always want to know what you think. Dr. Ben Carson and Donald Trump are locked in the battle to lead the GOP. Will either of them be your candidate? Let us know. NewsmaxPolls.com. Coming right up, an American bomb kills 22 in Afghanistan. As you know, the Taliban attacked the city of Kanduz on September 28th. Afghan security forces have been fighting to remove the insurgents ever since. Unfortunately, the Taliban have decided to remain in the city and fight from within, knowingly putting civilians at significant risk of harm. We have now learned that on October 3rd, Afghan forces advised that they were taking fire from enemy positions and asked for air support from U.S. forces. An airstrike was then called to eliminate the Taliban threat and several civilians were accidentally struck. This is different from the initial reports, which indicated that U.S. forces were threatened and that the airstrike was called on their behalf. And welcome back to Daily Wrap. That was U.S. Army General John Campbell today addressing the airstrike that struck a hospital run by Doctors Without Borders in Afghanistan over the weekend, killing 22 people. The general went on to say that three investigations are currently underway and, quote, if errors were committed, we'll acknowledge them. We'll hold those responsible accountable and we'll take steps to ensure mistakes are not repeated. President Obama released a statement Sunday saying, and we quote, the Department of Defense has launched a full investigation. We will wait the results of that inquiry before making a definitive judgment as to the circumstances of this tragedy. But why isn't this story leading in the headlines? And is the mainstream media giving the Obama administration a pass here? The New York Times completely rewrote and changed the title of its report on the bombing, get this, seven times. Early on October 3rd, the New York Times published an article and it was headlined this, airstrike hits hospital in Afghanistan, killing at least nine people. Minutes later, it changed the headline to airstrike hits doctors without borders hospital in Afghanistan. Let's turn the page again to headline number three, Afghan hospital hit by airstrike, Pentagon says. How about number four? U.S. investigates after bombs hit Afghan hospital. And how about number five? U.S. is blamed after bombs hit Afghan hospital. CNN also has been blamed for downplaying the event. Did the media try to shield the White House from this major screw-up? Let's go to a former mediaiter, if that's a word, himself, <laughs> Noah Rothman, who knows a thing or two about these sort of situations. <clears throat> what those headlines were indicative of is a newsroom that is getting bombarded by an agency just raising cane over the nature of the report, the nature of the headline, trying to do their best to massage the story to a favorable direction towards them, wrestling with the newsroom's instincts, obviously want to report the facts. I don't necessarily think that the, the national press is covering up for this in a way that they wouldn't have in necessarily if George Bush was in office. True, this would be leading the headlines for the next week if it was Bush in office, as opposed to Barack Obama, who has made a name for himself as trying to end these wars. Uh, but the reality of it is, is that these wars aren't, aren't going to end. They're not going to end on Barack Obama's watch. We are going to be in Iraq. We are going to be in Afghanistan with a substantial presence. What I'm afraid of is that these Afghan airstrikes were called in by, from what we understand, actual Afghans who are on the ground. Mm -hmm. um, that, that raises the prospect that this is going to continue to happen until and unless we move in actual U.S. siders to site these targets and direct the munitions where they need to go, which means we're going to have to continue to ramp up these campaigns. I'm a, I think that's what the New York Times might be afraid of. Rick, we're coming up now on 14 years. Think about that. 14 yeah. years since we first went into Afghanistan in 2001. Do you think the news media, besides, okay, yeah, I agree with Noah that if this were a Bush administration, it would be played more for, for whatever reason. But that this is also numbness, 
that after 14 years when these things happen, another airstrike hit where it shouldn't have and some people that shouldn't have been killed got killed. And it's not a domestic story, so therefore it's, it's not uh, going to get as much play. It, it's a darn good question. Look, and, and I, I, I do have to say this. You know, I, I'm open to the idea, certainly, that if Bush were still the president, it would get bigger play. But remember, there was a lot of big news going on these past three days, well, that's true. including a thousand-year rainstorm that was killing people and stuff right here in, in, in the Carolinas. I would argue the school shooting also school was, shooting was certainly a year, did. day and so, a half So I, I don't think we should leap to that conclusion, but I'm not going to castigate anybody for suggesting it. I get it. Uh, yeah, you know what? In the same way that, that we were talking the other night about how we've grown numb to these college shootings. Uh, 14 years? Yeah, I sh we shouldn't grow numb. This is a huge story. It is a terrible mistake. Just a terrible, terrible, terrible mistake. Uh, and But I, I, I like your suggestion. I hadn't thought about it, but it makes sense. We are growing now. Bill, do you think it's a matter of supply and demand as well? In other words, and, and it's kind of a weird way to put it, but the American public just doesn't care about things that don't affect them directly. And in this case, th this was in a northern part of Afghanistan, and it, Doctors Without Borders, I mean, these people are, are you know, salt of the earth as yeah. far as what they're doing. But domestic stories now always seem to trump the international ones. Well, you know, it's, I think it's a combination of a couple of things. As you suggested, there is a numbness. We've been there for 14 years, and there is a numbness to this. I'm happy that the media is not playing this as hard as they would, I believe, under George W. Bush, because it also cuts the military a little bit of a break here until we find out exactly what happened. But to your question, all news is local. And as Rick mentioned, we have a thousand year flood going on down in South Carolina. We have people being evacuated, losing power, losing their lives, and we've got a school shooting in Oregon. Yeah, and sometimes you have to prioritize in these situations. And look, there, there always will be some sort of bias in media, I believe that. But in yeah. this case, I think there were some reasons that justify it not being the lead lead in, in this situation. Okay, so do you think the mainstream media is spinning the airstrike story? Go to NewsmaxTV.com slash comments. Let your voice be heard. May read a couple of those comments later in the show. But up next, we're talking to CEO and founder of Politicon. Fun stuff. Simon City, join us. And welcome back to The Daily Wrap. This weekend in Los Angeles, an event will unfold that is truly the very first of its kind. It's the merging of the entertainment industry and the political industry with stars from both worlds in attendance. The event is called Politicon. And here to tell us all about it is Simon Seedy, the event's founder. Simon, welcome. Thank you very much. It's very nice to be here. It's good to have you. So let's start out by telling us a little bit about the genesis of Politicon and who attendees can expect to see and hear at the event. Well, it came about, my background is the uh, live entertainment industry. <coughs> um, I was listening to uh, a radio show uh, about politics and it was live and it was nothing to do with what they were talking about. It was the intensity of the audience reaction and it sounded it was a sound I'd heard every day of my working life. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we put this thing together and it's supposed to be a fun, entertaining, entertaining and relevant uh, event. And we wanted to bring both the worlds of comedy, music, art, entertainment, politics, pop culture all together. People are used to having these events now. There's Comic-Con, obviously, for the comic book generation. There's South by Southwest for new media. You know, there's TED Talks. There's CPAC. There's Netroot Nation. Netroots Nation. There's all sorts of these things. But they're very sort of uh, divided to their, their own little worlds. And we wanted to bring it all together, basically. And you've really done that. Uh, I'm uniquely familiar with the list of guests. Why don't you tell us some of the people? I know you've got some great performers coming who are actually going to be performing uh, and then you have just a, such a widespread from the political world uh, that will be putting on panels, uh, speaking in the large rooms. Uh, give, us, give us a little update as to who some people can see if they come to the event this weekend. Well, we've got so much going on. I mean, really, we've got uh, Alex Castellanos, Newt Gingrich, James Carville and David Axelrod all debating this, year's, uh, this season's election which I think is a pretty serious panel. I think that's going to be one of the highlights. Um, we've got Ann Coulter against 
Jenk from the Young Turks. I think that one's going to be a bit of a doozy. <laughs> um, we've got all sorts of panels going on. Uh, we've got serious ones and we've got frivolous ones. We've got uh, Emmy Award winner Tony Hale, who plays the body man on Veep, having a conversation with Reggie Love, who was uh, Obama's body man. Uh, famously. I think that'll be really interesting, really fun. I'm, I'm just wondering if you're classifying my panel under serious or frivolous. Well... <laughs> <laughs> Joe, go ahead. What do you have for Simon? Hey, Simon, I, I've written in Mediate on several occasions that this is already, and we're so early on, we're almost 400 days until the election, the greatest political theater we've seen in our lifetime. We're just throwing Trump in there alone, and then all these different candidates on the GOP side, and then you know Hillary's problems on, on the Democratic side, and Bernie Sanders rising to where he is now, 28,000 people in Boston over the last weekend. I imagine then this is having an effect on your attendance as well. Is this the most anticipated event that you've thrown in this regard ever, just based on what we're seeing already in terms of ratings for the debates? It's incredible when you watch when you watch Bernie Saunders uh, go on mainstream television and say, "I'm a socialist. I believe in socialized medicine," and then you have Donald Trump saying what he says on on national television. It's incredible to think that these guys, these outliers, have become, you know, rock stars in the political world. And, you know, it has had an effect on what we're doing. You know, I think it's always, I think politics and pop culture has always been, you know, bedfellows uh, for, for, you know, for thousands of years, really, I think uh, we'll, we'll probably find. So I don't think it's any surprise that this is happening. But, you know, in this day and age of social media or 24 hour uh, news channels, you know, that, that, that are absolutely everywhere, um, I, I think that it's, it's an obvious growth. And I think that uh, Politicon is, is absolutely in the right place at the right time um, for, for such events. And I think, it, I think this election is just going, uh, getting weirder and weirder. It is impressive. I can't, I can't uh, wait to see how it comes, how 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 it how it comes out, and uh, I think that's the case for all the people that are coming to Politicon. Yeah, and, and you know, it, it really attributes to what you're doing because it's such a polarized environment we have now, whether it be in cable news, whether it be in Washington, and the fact you're getting all these different folks from all these different ideologies and places together in the same room, I, I find it extraordinarily uh, compelling. Rick, Rick, what do you got planned? When you got uh, well, it it should be a great weekend. It's October 9th and October 10th this coming Friday and Saturday. Saturday at the LA Convention Center. Uh, it's uh, I know I'm looking forward to being there, and I know everybody I know in the political world is going to do it. Uh, so if you're in that area, we certainly want you to come down. Simon, thanks so much. Uh, I look forward to seeing you. Our TV executive producer here at Newsmax, Chad Wilkinson, will also be there if the, if the folks right. want to beat up on him. I know we do every day. <laughs> we'll see you this weekend, Simon. We can't wait. We'll look forward to it. And uh, I hope everybody comes, politicon.com, and we'll see you all there now, on uh, Friday and Saturday. Take care, Simon. We'll see you this weekend. If you'd like to come and you're in the Los Angeles area, we will uh, give you a way. We're giving away two free tickets. Just email us at newsmaxtv.com slash comments and see if you can win them. Uh, we're going to read some of your viewer comments coming up next, so don't go anywhere. Stay with us. And welcome back to Daily Wrap. Before we get to your viewer comments, we want to remind you that beginning tomorrow night at 7 p.m., Dr. Ben Carson sits down with our own Steve Malzberg one-on-one -on -one to discuss his latest surge in the polls. Can he surpass the current poll leader, Donald Trump? Find out in his own words tomorrow night at 7 p.m. That's only on Newsmax TV. All right, time to read some of your viewer comments. First up, we asked you to share your thoughts on last week's shooting in Oregon. Ken says, Joe, oh, well, that's me, you hit the nail on the head. There are 49% less shootings, but the media puts so much emphasis on covering these tragedies and they milk each one for all that it's worth. As a result, the, quote, low information voters think that gun violence is on the rise, when in reality it isn't. Every single one of these nutjobs that have committed these mass shootings all had one thing in common. They wanted and received copious amounts of attention. What uh, the gentleman there is referring to is that, yes, since 1993, shootings are down 49%, right, right. and that is rarely reported. I think the reason why we get so much press coverage here is because these are mass shootings at campuses, and those seem to be on the rise. And, and, obviously and I think mass, mass shootings certainly draw attention. I, I would only disagree slightly with them and say, of course they get attention. It's not media over, or being overwrought. It's a mass shooting. 
I agree so. with you on that. Yeah. Henry says, you are all missing the point. It is not about gun control. The root cause is our culture. We have a culture that is obsessed with violence and death. Just look at our entertainment and pop culture. Until we address the cultural issue, nothing will change, regardless of what laws are passed or not pass. I would only say this to you, Henry, if you were paying attention to the show, we talked about precisely that. So maybe we're not missing the point after all. PBR us, and you never miss a moment. Madeline says, guns and the Second Amendment are necessary for safety. Gun-free zones are begging to be attacked. Remember, the police are always at least five minutes away. Better be prepared than let several more lives be sacrificed to the psychopath's killing spree. Okay, Rick. Well, uh, let's just continue. We also asked you who should replace John Boehner as Speaker of the House. Reggie says, we do not want Kevin McCarthy as Speaker. He is not fit to represent the Republican Party. Actually, we need to clean house and start all over. This is why everyone wants new blood in the Republican Party. We are sick and tired of these gutless wimps. All they are interested in is protecting their rear and getting reelected. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Anybody a question here? Let me ask Noah, actually. Okay. Does anybody like Kevin McCarthy? And how did he get to the number one <laughs> position in the first place? Because he was everybody in the number two position. Yeah, I know, I get it, but boy, uh, I've never seen less support for somebody who may become speaker. Of the a House. lot of people like Kevin yeah. McCarthy. Most notably, a lot of people in the Republican conference. Yeah. Uh, he's a very likable figure, and he's actually made a lot of friends by doing what you do in politics, which is back scratching and is assisting other people. Is he at risk? Yes. He is at risk. Okay. He is at risk. All that said, he's at risk, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah he, because he's, he really did step in it with those yes. Benghazi comments. He allowed Jason Chaffetz right. to make a run at him, who's making a very serious play for, for the speakership. But I don't think it's going to go anywhere, but he's he's opened himself up to a lot of criticism he deserves. So McCarthy still gets it then, in your opinion? I do think Probably. so, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, Noah got it exactly right. I mean, but as he said, a lot of people like him. Most importantly, a lot of people in the Tea Party wing of the House have always <laughs> liked him because he has reached out to him. Uh, now, you open up the door... As he did, there's a lot of people within that Tea Party wing that are going to take their shot. And, of course, Jason Chaffetz is the one who's doing it. Noah's got it right. Not a chance he'll win. Scalise says he has the votes. That's for the number two position. Yeah, okay. Number two. Number okay. two. That's what, I, that's what I meant. Okay. We also <laughs> asked you if the Benghazi committee, that's why you don't read headlines and read the story. Uh -huh. I just glance at that. I go, really? Yeah, look at that thing. Uh, we also asked you if the Benghazi committee should be disbanded. John says the Benghazi committee should definitely continue. I want to answer to the phony video, why security was denied, why no quick reaction force Rick. Uh, Pat says, I don't think the Benghazi committee should be disbanded. There are so many areas where Hillary Clinton has broken the law. Senate Minority Leader Harry Reid is overreaching as usual. Folks, you're in no danger. It will not be disbanded. Yeah, I think if Harry Reid says, you know, you really should stop that Benghazi, yeah, the, pe yeah, the yeah, Republicans won't be like, you're happen. right, Harry, we should. You've yeah. been so kind to us over the last 28 years. <laughs> anyway, finally tonight, Brian says, of course the committee should get to the bottom of what happened in Benghazi. Trey Gowdy has already proven that none of the other committees even talk to the president of, of Libya, excuse me, or the top representative in Benghazi at the time. Can't remember his name. They also have found emails that she has not released and that she thought she had wiped clean with a cloth that are deemed classified and are a few of them were top secret, in fact. This includes details about Iran's nuclear program. She lied under oath that she handled overall classified emails. You get the point of this comment. So, <laughs> yeah, seriously, what will be the net net of all this? Will Hillary be able to play the victim here in this case and actually make it into well, something just, positive for herself? She can't make it into a positive. But I mean, the door just got open a lot wider than it was, thanks to, to Congressman McCarthy. But, no, look, this the email thing will not have a happy ending, even if it were to have a happy ending for Hillary, where she's exonerated or whatever. Uh, it's done its damage. The question is, is it enough damage to... Get rid of her. Do you know what I mean? It, it, will this allow her to play the Republicans are out to get me card? No, you don't, win, you don't win playing the victim. You don't? No. Ooh. Okay. We'll end it on that note. And if you want to weigh in on any of the issues we talk about here in the show, be sure to go to newsmaxtv.com slash comments right there. As you can see, we read them on the air. Up next, happy times time for yay or nay. This is The Daily Wrap. Introducing Abilify. For people who think they can be president. Once taken, Abilify destroys the damaged part of the brain that says, I'm gonna be president, leading to an almost immediate return to reality. It's the only dementia medication prescribed for 11 specific people. So ask your 
doctor about Abilify today, Bobby Jindal. Because not everyone can be president. And now we know. <laughs> Scott Walker That's and great. Rick Perry apparently have taken a bill <laughs> and Welcome back to the show, everybody. That was from the 41st season premiere of Saturday Night Live. Yep, you're that old. And with that, it's happy time. Time for yay or nay. First up, most of Saturday's episode was politically focused. There was even a surprise guest. Hey, bartender. Keep them coming. <laughs> Oh, Val. I'm just so darn bummed. All anyone wants to talk about is Donald Trump. Donald Trump? Isn't he the one that's like, uh, you're all losers? <laughs> Do you think he'll win the primaries? He must. <laughs> I want to be the one to take him down. I will destroy him and I will mount his hair in the Oval Office! <laughs> <laughs> okay, and Val even had some advice for the high-strung Mrs. Clinton. Um, maybe you should take a vacation. A vacation? A vacation. Vacation? change? What do you say? A vacation! Did somebody say vacation? <laughs> oh my god. They're multiplying. <laughs> the great Daryl Hammond reprising his role as former President Bill Clinton. So will this SNL appearance help counter the bad press Mrs. Clinton received this weekend? Yay or nay? Noah Rothman. No, but not for lack of trying. Oh, gosh, you work so hard. Oh, isn't Archer, uh, your competitor is just so stupid and silly and they can't possibly touch you. That's political humor these days. It's more like a, uh, a little bit of a self-aggrandizing. If she, if she needed a uh, pep talk, she sure got it by SNL. Wow. Ooh. Bill? I don't know. I, you know, I, I, I was going to say, yeah, because it may, it, 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 at least we liked her or presented her as likable for just a couple of seconds mm -hmm. and reminded us that m maybe there is another side to her. But Well, apparently <laughs> I'll be buying my friend Noah a sense of humor for Christmas this year. <laughs> Burn. That was, that, that, was, was that was about the most... I don't even know what to say. Oh, stop. Criticism. Oh, stop. I thought there was she was no hilarious. Effort, no effort there to do any political skewering, anything a little hard. That woman what cannot did you take criticism, so they didn't even try. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought it was very funny. I get what Noah's saying. Sometimes I don't. it can I really be dark don't. and it can be biting. And in that this Self case, self-effacing. Have you uh, have you ever effacing. seen a politician on Saturday Night Live where it gets dark and biting? Yes. Who? Sarah Palin. That was dark and biting. Her appearance? Are you she kidding? She has she. Well, yes. Well, no. Her, no. Not her appearance, but what she walked out to, which was Tina Fey mocking her yeah. for about two minutes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll consult everything down. I'm sorry, a little bit of media I'll, I'll consult the, the writing of writers. No and Rick were getting along so well over these last couple of appearances, but now it's on, baby. All right, it's speaking down. of Hillary Clinton, most of her campaign has been focused on her years of experience in various roles throughout her life, but do Americans care as much about experience as they once did? Well, according to a new Pew poll, the answer is resounding, nah. -uh. The number of registered Republican voters who say experience is the most important quality for a presidential candidate has dropped from 57% to 29% in the past five months alone. This as voters are leaning more towards candidates with new ideas and a different approach. We've known this for some time now as political outsiders like Trump, Carson, Fiorina have been leading in the polls. But does this shift mark the end of the political establishment as we know it? Unger. Now, even Noah has to agree that's funny because we're all old enough to remember Barack Obama, he has no experience. He can't be president of the United States. And now that they have candidates with no experience, it's all good. No need to worry. Bill? No, I, for now it's great because we'll <laughs> watch the debates. We'll see what happens. But I, I, I think at one point we're going to return to that. No, you that, get three seconds to retort. The survey also pulled the youngest view voter in the House. So they, they're, they're likely to want. All right. New that's our final word for tonight. <laughs> Thank you, panel. On behalf of Rick Unger. Thank you for joining us tonight. The Steve Malzberg Show. Oh, that's next.